Welcome to your lab recording for 70-741 Lab 7, Managing and Using IPAM. For this lab, we're going to be using our DC1 and our server one. So I'm going to click on, on both. They should both already be on. I'm going to go to console. Yep, there it is. It's on. Let's go to console. Okay, there's that one. Let's go back over. Let's go to the server one. Let's see if we can get it to come on up for us. And there it should be up in a moment. Okay, so exercise 7.1 is managing DHCP with IPAM. Exercise 7.2 is managing DNS with IPAM. So understand that IPAM can monitor DHCP and DNS servers from any physical location in the organization, as well as simultaneously manage multiple DHCP servers or scopes that exist among, among multiple DHCP servers. So for, we're first going to log into Server 1. Press my button at the top, control delete. This is where we installed IPAM in our last lab. Give it a moment to come up, bring Server Manager up, because if you remember, we use Server Manager to do our work on IPAM. Okay, Server Manager should be up and there it is. I'm going to select IPAM and then I'm going to come down here under monitor under monitor and manage DNS and DHCP servers. We're going to select that and we just see our DNS ser service and DHCP service both running on DC1. I'm going to right click the DC1 of datum.com DHCP server and choose edit properties. Let's see. Sorry about that. This this one. Edit DHCP server properties. I'm going to Let's see here. Why do I not see? Oh, okay. Under show all, I'm going to click the show all. And that, okay, when I clicked on, right on the word show all, that highlighted everything and gave me all the options. So that's what you need to do there. So I want to ensure that enable DNS dynamic updates is set to yes, and it is. I want to ensure that enable name protection is set to yes and it is. At that point I can just go ahead and click OK. So my, my options were already selected as yes. We're going to accept that. I'm going to right click on my server once more, the DHCP server, and I'm going to say create DHCP scope. So we don't even have to log on to our DHCP server. We can do it from IPAM. Again, OK, all is already selected. Show all. They're already highlighted. I'm going to do it one more time. There, I got the summary highlighted as well. And we're going to name our scope IPAM scope, no space. In the starting IP address, I'm going to select 192.168.12.2. For my ending IP address, it's going to be 192.168.12.254. We're going to change the lease duration to three days. Once you've made those settings, take your screenshot and paste it into step 13. If you've got your screenshot, go ahead and click OK to close. 
and it's going to create that scope. Now I'm going to right click on my DHCP server once more and I'm going to select launch MMC. So it launches the snap in for me without me having to connect anything. I want to be able to have a good view of my server. I'm going to select the server. I'm going to select IPv4 and there is my IPAM scope. If your IPAM scope does, does show up, go ahead, take a screenshot, paste it into step number 17. If you've got your screenshot, go ahead and close the snap-in. Now under monitor and manage, I'm going to click on DHCP scopes. So now it shows all the scopes that we're managing. I'm going to select the IPM scope. I'm going to right click and select edit the scope. I'm going to select advanced and we're going to change the subnet delay from 0 to 50 milliseconds. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to once again we're in our DHCP scopes I'm going to right click on it and say configure or create a DHCP reservation. So on our reservation screen, the name I'm going to create, the reservation name is going to be PC2. For my IP address, it's going to be 192.168.12.14. For the client ID, we're going to type in the MAC address of this system and it's E0-699-5110. E E five three A. Let me just double check, make sure that's twelve characters long, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. If you've got that information in there, take a screenshot and paste it into step twenty eight. Once you've got your screenshot, go ahead and click OK. And at this point, exercise seven point one is done. Let's go ahead and go into exercise 7.2, Managing DNS with IPAM. For DNS, you can track all configured zones, the zone type details, and the health of the zones. This DNS zone monitoring view displays all the forward lookup and reverse lookup zones on all DNS servers that IPAM is currently managing. For the forward lookup zones, IPAM also displays all servers that are hosting the zone. So we're going to select DNS and DHCP servers once more under, under Monitor and Manage. This time, however, instead of the DNS or DHCP, I'm going to select the DNS server. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say Create DNS Zone. I'm going to move my screen up just a little bit here. So for the zone name, it's going to be named ipam.com. And if you look here for our question number one, by default, where is the DNS zone stored? Well, our first three, are, are, we have zone category, zone type, zone name. Under advanced, what does it say where the zone is going to be stored? Store the zone in, yes, Active Directory. Click OK to create the zone. That immediately takes us to our DNS zones. 
and at this point none are in the red. However, we're going to select tasks and then select retrieve server data. So it's going to retrieve data from our DNS server and now here it says wait a minute or two and then press F5. Let's see if it's completed yet. I'm going to press F5 and it has. Now our zones are all in the green with a zone status. Go ahead and take a screenshot and paste that into step 8. Let's scroll our screen down a little bit and take a look at our zone properties. Question number two is what is the minimum TTL? Well, let's take a look. What is it? Is that an hour, a day, a minute? This is minutes, hours, days. So the minimum TTL is one day. Let's go ahead and select our DNS and DHCP servers once more. I'm going to right click on my DNS and again create DNS zone. And for the zone category, we're going to select reverse IPv4 reverse lookup zone. For the network ID, I'm going to type in 192.168.15. I'm going to at this point go ahead and move my screen up so I can get to the OK button. And if you've got that portion of your address and you see our in-adder.arpa, that reverse zone name has been created, going to be created correctly, I can go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to, we're on this DNS zones and I'm going to right click, let's see where are we at here, DNS zones and right click the IPAM.com, OK, right click the IPAM.com and choose add DNS re resource record. Remember our resource records are the way we find information in our DNS. So for the resource record type, I'm go we're going to first select new. No. I'm going to select an A record. For the name, it's going to be IPAM PC. For the address, it's going to be 192.168.15.15. We're going to click Add Resource Record. We can now see the A record that will be created. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So if you look towards down here in the bottom left, see the small arrow next to forward lookup zone? Go ahead and click on that. And then click on ipam.com. Okay, so if you've got forward looking and your ipam.com displayed right here under current view in our top center select resource records and there is the resource record that we just created go ahead and take a screenshot and paste it into step 24 if you've got your screenshot our second exercise is completed 
Let's go ahead and carry out the lab challenge, delegating roles in IPAM. Understand that within IP address management, there are several sets of tasks that might require separate staff to carry them out. For this reason, IPAM relies on role-based access control to provide the necessary delegated administrative features. Under our Okay, my apologize, I needed to pause the video there for a second. So in IPAM, take a look at your list and they want us to go to access control. Well, we don't see that here. We need to scroll this list down. Now there's access control. So go ahead and select access control. We're gonna click on tasks, add user role. For the name, we're going to type in IPAM admin. For the following options, we're going to click OK. DHCP server options, DHCP scope operations, DHCP reservation options. DNS zone operations and at this point we can go ahead we can click it says click IPAM admin scroll to the bottom of the screen okay I'm sorry we selected the four operations and we click OK Now we can see our IPAM admin role has been added here, or user. We're going to scroll down. We selected it to click it. We can now see details about it. I'm going to scroll my screen all the way down. Take a screenshot of this and paste it into step 9. Select Click Access Policies. Let's see, where are access policies? That must be down this list. Well, let's see where let's see where we can find access and there I do see it. Access policies is here on the left hand column at the bottom. I'm going to select access policies. We're going to go to the upper right to tasks and we're going to add an access policy under the access policies dialog box for users we're going to click add user alias we're going to type in username administrator and click OK in the access settings section I'm going to scroll that down I'm going to click new again we got to scroll down and the role I'm going to select is as add IPAM admin and click OK. It's creating that policy. There it is. If you see the same thing I see, take a screenshot, paste it into step 17 and our lab 7 is complete. Thank you.